live. Right, welcome everybody. This is, uh, in fact, our first meeting of the OERU Management Committee this year. And so it's great to have uh, every, everybody here. Uh, we've had a note that uh, David Porter might be uh, a little bit late uh, dealing with traffic problems, uh, but uh, we hope David will be able to join us a little late in the meeting, so that's all good. To the best of my knowledge, um, I don't think any of the uh, working groups have actually had a meeting this year, and, and, th and that's fine because I think the purpose of, of this meeting is really looking a bit forward as, as opposed to kind of reporting back on you know, meetings we've had as individual working groups. But I just want to confirm, because looking from what I see in the wiki, we haven't had any of the working groups that have convened uh, to date this year during 2016. Is that correct? Okay, perfect. So um, the, the purposes of this meeting, let me try and get a bit of a screen share going here. Uh, let me go here. And in theory, that should be coming through for you. Uh, if the screen share is coming through, just you can put up your head, uh, thumbs up or something. Yeah, perfect, great. I'll try and get a slightly bigger resolution here, okay. So the purpose of this meeting uh, is really to affirm the terms of reference that were proposed and discussed by the MVP task force, uh, to table the minimum viable product implementation plan and discuss what's happening there. Uh, for us individually, as each of our working groups, to review the KPIs uh, from the 2016 operational priorities and to have a think about our working group structures uh, in terms of how we're operating this year. So those are the main objectives of the meeting. And we've, we've posted the agenda, uh, it's been available for everyone to comment. So moving straight ahead, uh, let's just have a look at our standing items from the previous. Hey, if, I could, if I could just make a note for a minute, I, I, I should have done that earlier, but I will have to leave at well, it's six o'clock my time here. So I'll have to leave at the end of this hour to another committee, a search committee that I'm on, unfortunately. Uh, fair enough, uh, and th thanks for that. So what I'll do, I'll do my best that we cover the uh, substantive issues before then. Um, and then we will, uh, after six o'clock, we'll sign all the work to your desk. How does that work for you? Okay. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. <laughs> all right, Evan, thanks. Um, so in terms of the action items, happy to report that uh, we've managed to get them all done. Uh, the, the big issues, that, well, the big issues, we've uh, rescheduled the next partners meeting for the 3rd to the 5th of October, which will be held in Inverness. We, uh, a small group of us have been working together uh, in putting the 2016 action plan together. So that's all on track. Um, we have successfully completed the digital skills for collaborative OER development, which finished up last week, I believe. So that's going. We have done everything we needed to do for the amalgamation of the course approval and the curriculum and, and program of study working groups. So there are a couple of changes in the wiki that we needed to you know, just set up and the discussion list so that's been done. Um, we've set up the MVP task force that's happening and working rather well. And we've convened this meeting, although it has been a little bit later because of all the activity that's been happening around the MVP task force. So happy to report we're all up to date on the action items we suggested from or noted from the previous meeting. Uh, also, just a quick brief report back uh, from our, the previous meeting. Uh, David Porter had suggested that we you know, develop a clear list of the MB, uh, MVP KPIs. And uh, between uh, Dave and myself, we attempted uh, an elaborate process with uh, you know, sort of project planning methodology and Gantt charts. And uh, you know, it looked very impressive, but we realized that there are an, a high number of interdependencies between the different activities and what we're trying to do with the OERU. Um, you know, the things like, you know, you, you can't nominate courses unless you know the partners that are going to be offering assessment services that are able to transcript credit, that are able to get certain approvals done. And so we've got all these interdependencies and we quickly realized that using this Gantt charting methodology uh, is not going to work unless we had a full-time project manager, which we don't have. So we, we've scrapped that approach and have, um, have got a couple of tweaks to move us forward. 
However, this is not wasted. I'll make a brief reference to this later on in the meeting. So that's in terms of the matters arising. Um, I don't think we need to take comment here. That's pretty much uh, you know, just distributing information. Uh, the third item there on the agenda is we've done a little bit of work in updating the master list of all the KPIs from the strategic plan. And a couple of the tweaks we've uh, implemented uh, is a little bit of color coding. So any of the KPIs that uh, have a green background color are in fact those uh, KPIs that are being implemented by the MVP task force. So that just helps a little bit with the, the navigation of this big master, master list. Uh, the other uh, change we've implemented is this little status square here, which uh, you know, gives an indication of the status of the completion of those uh, KPIs basically using this code here, if it's if no squares are colored, we haven't started. One means we've started with it. Two, we've made significant progress. Three, we're nearing completion. Um, and, you know, four is done. So the other neat thing we can do is, you know, this table is sortable. So if you do click on, you know, the the header bar here, you know, you can sort these things in, a, you know, in accordance with, you know, the status of completion or according to the working group. And so how we've actually set this up in the wiki, this is a single source of information, this master table. And we have a widget which can extract the KPIs that are uh, relevant to each of the working groups. So on the individual working group pages, so for example, if you were to go to the strategic planning working group, you'll see that the, uh, the KPIs that are listed there are just those that apply to the strategic planning working group. So that's uh, a little bit of a summary of the, the changes we've made. And to be fair, as in the note I, I passed earlier on, you know, sort of in, in open source developments, anybody that uses open source uh, code or open source software has the ability to actually see the code. Um, and you know, in my particular case, I never look at the code. And in, in the similar uh, so, you know, similarly with the OERU, it's quite a bit of complex planning that goes on. And we have this philosophy that anybody that comes to the OVRU should be able to see the detail of all our planning. Although I suspect that the majority of folk actually don't need to see all the detail. So that's just, you know, getting that balance right between open planning and, um, you know, uh, transparent information for all and then simplifying the presentation of information through different wiki pages. So those are the updates. Uh, any comments or feedback from the floor? A lot of work there, Wayne, putting all those together. Good on you. <laughs> That's all I can say. And I, I think uh, the color coding and the other indicators make the, the master list more manageable. And it certainly helps at the, you know, the working group level. So then one of the challenges we had was dealing with complexity to give a, an accessible focus on things. And I think we're really getting there. So. Well done. Yeah. No, I, I think the improvements are, are, are working. And in fact, this is, a, you know, Dave mentioned this takes time, but we're actually going to save time uh, because, you know, we just have to update this table in one place. And if we're an amalgamator group, we've only got to change in one place. And then it will propagate throughout the wiki wherever we're using this information. So in the longer term, we, we're going to save a bit of time. Uh, well, that's the plan at any rate. Thanks for that feedback there. Uh, moving back to the agenda, um, the next item there is uh, relating to the MVP task force. Um, and just for the benefit of people who will be watching this video uh, um, or watching the video recording, I just want to go through how we navigate to get to the MVP task force page. So um, let's go to the wiki homepage. So take it right from the front. So from the homepage of Wiki Educator, uh, we've got a, a main uh, navigation link to the OERU planning page. From the, the planning page, we've got our main um, active working groups. And so then folk can go then directly to the MVP task force. Or alternatively, uh, they could use the quick links page, uh, which also has a link to, uh, to the main MVP task force activities. So here's the landing page of the MVP task force. 
uh, and it's linked to the terms of reference documentation as well as the implementation plan for the MVP. So just for the benefit of folk that are watching, that's how you get to this information. Uh, so in relation to the MVP, we actually have had a successful series of meetings, actually uh, convening meetings in the different time zones. Uh, full recording of the meeting, uh, so if you need to catch up on the detail. Uh, the, big, the big decisions that were, were taken there are, of course, the approval, unanimous approval of the terms of reference for the MVP task force, and that relates to a decision we need to take at the, or you know, affirm these uh, terms of reference from the OERUMC. The other significant uh, action item that had come out of these meeting, uh, out of the MVP uh, implementation plan meeting was the proposal for a course in learning in a digital age, uh, which we've extracted an agenda item, which we will discuss uh, during the OERU MC meeting. So at this point here, what I'd like us to do is to note and affirm the, the terms of reference that were approved by the MVP task force. Uh, I won't go through all the detail, but in short, it, the uh, membership of this group is anybody who's working on the assembly of an uh, MVP task force for the first year of study is part of this working group, as well as we have an institutional representative from each of the universities who will be offering assessment services uh, for the MVP task force or for the MVP courses and as well uh, being an open group uh, anybody can join we also have uh, three members of the um, board of directors of the OER foundation serving on the MVP task force so that is in terms of the membership um, we are agreeing to meet uh, roughly every six weeks and uh, the normal processes for scheduling our meetings they are conducted openly and the main purpose of this, this group is to um, get the implementations of the first year of study sorted. So at this point, uh, any comments or feedback on the terms of reference? And uh, if we don't have any objections, I'd like, us, I'd like to move that we affirm these terms of reference and have the report back loop of the MVP task force to the OVRU MC. So let me open the floor there and uh, for any comment or feedback. Um, Wayne, this is Mark. Um, just a quick question, this may be out of place, but uh, um, regarding the idea of volunteers, um, I've been working with a group of people from Athabasca University, who uh, several of whom seem interested in participating in some way, but I'm not exactly sure what the process would be for bringing them in. Uh, any, any suggestions? Uh, we welcome a volunteer. So the process for them to join is actually quite easy. Uh, let me actually just go, uh, let me open up a new page tab here. So if we just go to you know, groups.overu.org, this is just our main list, right? Yeah. Um, you'll see here OERU MVP Task Force. They can just click there. Um, and I'm actually logged in at the moment, uh, but if you, if you didn't have an account here under this membership here, uh, there would be a link, uh, you know, requesting you to join or inviting you to join. Um, and it's as easy as that. And then they'll get all the communications. So please feel free to uh, distribute an invitation to join the MVP task force to anybody uh, okay. who's remotely interested in what we're doing. So thanks for that, Mark. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Any uh, other comments or feedback relating to the terms of reference? If not, then I move forward that we affirm these and move on to the next agenda item. Sounds good to me, Wayne. I, um, I think this is the best thing going right now, the, the focus, this targeted focused effort to, to uh, get something out there. So this is good. Yeah, thanks for that, Erwin. Yes, it's, it's working exceptionally well. You know, we've got targeted courses, you know, people are you know, doing their things and we're meeting regularly. So I think this is really moving this agenda item forward in meaningful ways here. Right, moving then on to the next agenda item. Uh, it's this proposal for a course 
uh, which is the current working title is uh, Learning in the Digital Age. Uh, the concept is that the OERU in the OERU first year of study should have a course that focuses on you know, digital skills, digital literacy and learning skills for the 21st century and um, has a course like this available for uh, formal academic credit as part of the OERU first year of study and this was basically in endorsed by all the folk in the MBB task force. And uh, Thomas Edison State University has uh, also been working on a curriculum outline which uh, is called, uh, well, it's PLA 300, but don't be confused by the 300. It is actually a, a first year level course. And um, at the previous task force meeting, Mark gave us permission to actually share that full curriculum outline uh, in terms of where they're at with this particular course. And I've done a little a sort of high level thinking about what uh, you know, four micro courses might look like for a course like this. So we're at the point now to try and establish if there are any partners in the network who would be willing to accredit a course like this and assess a course like this. And we've got two institutions that have put up their hand thus far to continue the conversation. That's uh, Thomas Edison State University and Thompson Rivers University. I also know through the network that there are a couple of institutions busy uh, talking internally as to whether they can or can't do this. Um, but for now, as you know, with university process, there are you know, typically a number of committees for these sorts of things. So we you know, just need to wait patiently until we get that feedback. So at this point, I'd uh, like to open the floor um, whether you know, we think this is a good idea and to what extent we are likely to get uh, assessment services from you know, the partners that are uh, contemplating uh, moving this course forward. So to the first question, um, should we be pushing this? Uh, oh, the other thing which I might add is the OER Foundation actually has a little bit of funding that we can invest to contracting a consultant to actually uh, assemble and put the course together. So that's a, a big piece of the puzzle as well. Well, it's Erwin here. I, <clears throat> my sense of this course is that um, it may, it may uh, appeal to a very wide audience uh, of people who want to learn more about uh, open online learning. And it's almost in the sense of a MOOC. Um, where uh, not necessarily interested in any form of a degree or certificate or anything, but just in terms of general interest, that uh, it could, you know, it, it could yeah. get quite wide appeal, I would think. Yeah. So, and and um, yeah, that, I mean, that's a good point, Erwin. And the OERU delivery model is such that we would be able to, you know, accommodate the, you know, mm -hmm. participating out of self interest. So, uh, absolutely. Um, but I'm also keen to sort out the accreditation piece um, you know, for prospective, prospective learners. Yeah, and Mark and I agree that we'd work on that, and I, I'm pretty sure that um, that we could get some serious. We could, um, um, it would get a fair shot here. I could put it that way. We have a good relationship with our school of education, and and uh, they seem, okay. you know, definitely give it a, give it a shot. Yeah. So so we. You know, what we're saying to each other kind of, you know, on an 80-20 basis, it seems, you know, fair and reasonable that we should be able to achieve credit at at least one uh, institution. I mean, the reason I'm asking this question is, uh, should OER Foundation spend the money to develop this? Uh, because I, I wouldn't want to be spending that money on a course that we can't accredit. That's basically what I'm saying. Without having to put heads on blocks, right? I mean, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But if it's a fair chance... Uh, from a risk, risk well, management point of view, yeah. Wayne, I think it's um, a bit along the lines that Irwin's indicated that, um, you know, the, the very, there'll be very wide demand for a course like this. And I think just about every institution recognises that a core part of any first year program these days ought to be about skills in the digital age. Um, I would like to think that once we've got um, this course clearly in shape, that we'd be able to take it to... Uh, USQ schools here and faculties and say, well, you know, look at this. This is this is comparable to the one that we currently 
currently have, and um, you know, we need to accredit this. So, uh, um, David, would you be able to share, or let me put it this way, is there a public version of the comparable courses of the sort of the curriculum outline of the comparable courses that you have uh, available? Because what I'm sitting thinking is as we work on tweaking and refining, uh, you know, the, the, the course outline that we you try and design this in a way that it has maximum reuse potential. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, sure, Wayne. Uh, we do have a course. Um, just trying to think of the actual title now. I think it's um, uh, e-learning for contemporary society. But fundamentally, uh, it will be very similar to okay. what's being proposed here. And um, I can see no reason why we can't share the course specification of that. And uh, you know, it may well contribute, be able to contribute to what's being worked on here. Um, it is for us a um, uh, first year undergraduate course uh, and it's one that, that is funded by you know Commonwealth government subsidies uh, so you know I'd love to be able to say we just had sure. hit, hit the course and let's use the OARU but I'm not at all sure that the university would come up that because it, it currently generates income from the yep. university through, through Commonwealth government subsidies but absolutely I'd be really happy to find the course specifications and some of the and we can, I would think, be able to pretty much share a lot of the material as a guiding, as a kind of, you know, a, a, a document that might assist um, the development of this particular course. Okay. Uh, th th thanks for that, David. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, it, we will continue this conversation uh, offline um, because, you know, once I have the course specification, if, you know, I, we can just design and develop this curriculum in a way that there's a good fit with multiple institutions, um, you know, that, that's, a good, that's a good place to be, right? Yeah. So, uh, Mark, uh, just an, an open question. How, how much flexibility do we have in order for this course to be work, you know, to work for your purposes in you know, sort of tweaking the curriculum outline a little here and there? Oh, well, I, I suppose uh, we can take this in any direction we want. Uh, you know, uh, our idea was to create a sort of a, Gener a generic version, if you will, that uh, was not specific to uh, Thomas Edison. You know, there are certain policies and, and processes we follow, but uh, um, we, we thought we would add in those Thomas Edison specific things sort of after the fact um, so that we could offer it um, locally, you know, but uh, otherwise, no, no, by all means, that's uh, do with it, uh, whatever makes the most sense. Yeah, fantastic. So, I mean, we're We'll put a small team together here, you know, to take this forward, and then you know, we can have that conversation and see, you know, how this curriculum lines up, and then invest a little money to make it happen, right? I mean, I, I, I you know, I, I think it's a, a good place to be investing uh, because, you know, every OERU learner is, is going to need these skills uh, to be successful. Um, so I think it's a good thing. I think if the OERU is going to um, develop any course and call it its own, it would be something along these lines. It just it fits the mission more effectively. Yeah, good, good point, Mark. Thanks for that. Yeah, I'd endorse those comments, and I think um, the accreditation issue may take you know some time to work through. But even developing the course, I think, will lay a foundation for OERU learners and. Uh, also, we've got on our sort of KPIs the development of tutorials for enabling uh, students to work with OERU models and systems. So I see quite a significant overlap there, and I think we can benefit from, you know, giving priority this. And I think the outcomes will be useful, you know, whatever happens. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for those inputs, everybody. I, I, from the OER Foundation side, we'll certainly move this forward and uh, bring in all the, the folk who've expressed interest and who are important for taking this forward uh, you know, onto the team. So thank you for that. I'd also just like to acknowledge David Porter, who has uh, joined us during this conversation. And uh, David, you just to be aware, we are recording. Thanks, Wayne. I just got home, so I just plugged in as soon as I could. Yeah, all good. Uh, Erwin mentioned that you uh, might be caught in a bit of North, North Shore traffic, so all good.
Um, moving on then, the next item on the agenda is uh, just a quick update on the marketing communications and fund development brief. Uh, you will recall from the 2015 uh, partners meeting that we received a small uh, capacity development grant from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation of uh, $24,500 uh, really to do uh, three things, uh, improve resources for partner recruitment, uh, improve uh, you know, fund development, I'll, I'll get back to this point in a moment, um, and starting an action plan for recruiting OERU learners. Uh, and uh, more recently, uh, thanks to uh, David's suggestions, the, con uh, the idea of doing a bit of video marketing, specifically to develop two whiteboard style explainer videos, one targeting prospective learners, and then one uh, targeting prospective partners. Uh, where we are at with this uh, development, we've identified the, uh, the two uh, corporate communications uh, companies that will be helping us, uh, Brandscaping, who will be taking on the lion's share of the work uh, based in Canada, and um, Mohawk Media uh, here in New Zealand, who uh, does uh, work in producing professional um, you know, e e explainer videos. Uh, so th this is the brief that the consultants are working to. A couple of the board members have been taking a look at this. Uh, I just want to reference that this work is happening. If you do have any suggestions to help us move forward here, uh, to please comment on the discussion pages and or uh, you know add refinements and improvements to the actual wiki page. My thinking at this stage is uh, initially we were thinking of um, around corporate citizenship, maybe having a crowdfunding campaign to help um, uh, bring resources together for investing in course development. Um, it seems to me that a bigger priority would be to source funding for actual international marketing of the OERU first year uh, of, of study. Um, and you know, we need to get the word out to the different countries and the target audiences that this is happening. And so we're going to need a bit of money to do that. So one of the ideas percolating at the moment is, you know, to design a crowdfunding campaign that might generate a little, a little more funding to help us do some professional marketing. So that's where our thinking is at at the moment with the uh, with this proposal. Uh, any comments or feedback, thoughts, suggestions? We were talking about accessibility. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I, I strongly advocate this approach. I think it's very um, important to look across these different um, mechanisms for getting the point across using video. It seems like a no brainer. Yeah, sure. Right, I'll take silence to me in assent. Uh, the implication, of course, is when we start on some of the storyboarding ideas for you know, the video scripts, uh, I'm going to need input, so I'm, I'm, I'm counting on the team here and the folk that you'll be able to show, shoulder tap in your own organizations uh, to help us. And I have to say, marketing is, uh, I have no skills in marketing whatsoever. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to really need help here. So we've got a couple of professional folk on board, but you know the, the storyboarding uh, and the key points that need to be addressed is, is pretty important. So I, I will be calling on you uh, for help, guidance, and support. So moving on. Then. Great. Well, yeah. I'm sure our marketing department here would help if it, if you want to run things by them. You know, Jen Reed in particular. I'd be happy to tee up with oh, them, yeah. and they're very very good at, at marketing. Yeah, that would be a great help, Erwin. Thanks for that. You know, particularly I want to, des and I, for example, design these videos in a way that they are easy for uh, institutions to customize and own themselves. So in other words, that you know, True might want to add their own branding to, you know, the little video or whatever. And because we have this open shop, I mean, everything will be openly licensed. It'll be an you know, open file format. So, so people would be able to re reuse these marketing artifacts, if you will, in their own marketing if they wanted to. So it's, it's about designing that, getting that interface right as well. So thank, thanks for that, Erwin. We, we could even provide um, some instructional 
uh, some pedagogically uh, approved instructional videos using that as a um, as a mechanism or as the as the uh, substrate that we're working with so that everyone has has instructions on how to do it yep sounds good great so moving on then unless there are any additional comments here uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, reviewing the working group structures and uh, modus operandi for 2016. And you'll recall from our last meeting, we suggested the amalgamation of the... Wayne, just, just before we do that, I'm not sure that we spend any time on the item seven, uh, the implementation plan. I just believe it gives <laughs> a context for the discussion that we're about to have. You know yeah, absolutely, Jim. I'm just having a chuckle here myself. I actually missed that item, so thanks for uh, pointing out the error of my ways. Because that's the most important piece of this this meeting, really. Thanks, Jim. Right. So um, we we do have an action plan for implementing the OERU uh, first year of study. Uh, where we are at uh, in terms of the process, we have uh, two exit awards that are on the table. The one is the Certificate of General Studies from Thompson Rivers University. The other exit award is a Certificate of Higher Education that has been proposed, that was proposed by the University of Highlands and Islands. And I can update, we've actually developed the first iteration of the framework proposal that is going through the university processes internally. So that's all on track there. Uh, our target KPI was to assemble 10 North American sized courses uh, for the MVP. It's looking good. We have 13 confirmed courses so far. And uh, with any luck, we might have 14 now with the Learning for Development course. Uh, but the courses we have listed, um, Creating Sustainable Futures here at Otago Polytechnic, Principles of Management, Principles of Marketing, corporate communication, regional relations in Asia and the Pacific from USQ, Indigenous Australia from Charles Sturt University, art appreciation and techniques from Thompson Rivers, uh, introduction to critical reasoning, which is the uh, remix course at, uh, that was first developed by UNISA and Thomas Edison State University. Remixed, we have the introduction to psychology one, which uh, quantum polytechnic, university are developing. We also have the introduction to research methods, which is a course that was completed by TRU. And interestingly, given uh, the Certificate for General Studies at Thompson Rivers University is a residency requirement of two courses, six credits, that have to be assessed locally. So what that means, art appreciation and techniques, and the uh, introduction to research methods in psychology are available as OERU courses that could be assessed locally at uh, TRU. Um, Erwin, I'm, I'm, that's correct, right? Um, that's correct, and both are, both are now fully uh, um, adopted courses at TRU, and I just met with Christine and Gail this afternoon to look at how we're going to do the exams. We don't, we don't know about the art appreciation yet for, for intro to research methods in psychology. We've uh, Farhad Dastor, who's one of our uh, members on the uh, project team, I think, um, wrote a, a challenge exam. So we're gonna use a challenge exam process for that. And we actually designed a multiple choice exam that's, um, how would I put it? It's, it's, it's a quite a sophisticated multiple choice exam that uh, it's got a number of scenarios and, and it forces them to think across the course and follow the kinds of thinking processes that were taught in the course rather than just sort of that recall type thing. So we're gonna experiment with that, but we're, we will, for that we just wanna use our course challenge uh, process yeah make that course, that exam available. Perfect, I mean, that's wonderful news. And I mean, this again, the power of the OERU model is that uh, our institutions have the autonomy to decide on the appropriate assessment methods that, and approaches they want to use for transcripting the credits. So this is coming together rather nicely. Um, the, three, uh, the three courses uh, nominated uh, by the University of Highlands and Islands, uh, Introduction to Business, uh, introduction to a customer centered business and introduction to operations management. So that's actually looking quite good. We have a good number of courses in sort of business studies 
which is likely to be attractive from a vocational perspective and a, a good spread of general education courses. So this is actually looking rather, rather good. If, um, uh, like one little caveat I have to make is that our uh, <clears throat> diploma in general studies, the business course, the business area is a little more challenging for than yep. for most of the rest. I'll, I'll have that discussion with the dean uh, just to see what he thinks, and I, there may be something his, sort of historical to that, but. Yep. Um, it might be if we're, if we're going to credit that towards the uh, towards the uh, certificate, it may you know it may be helpful to maybe arrange some kind of a peer review or something from the faculty of business here. I'd like to explore that a little bit more. Yeah. If 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 the First, developers, yeah. the ones who are developing yeah. these courses, if if they're amenable to to maybe a peer review from our school of business faculty, that might help. I don't know yet, but we'll have to play with that. Oh, uh, Irwin, absolutely. I mean, all our course developments are open. Yet they uh, are open. Uh, we would welcome any peer review input. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the other thing I've done to help mitigate against these kinds of challenges, um, which you will find at you know multiple institutions, is to try and maximise the availability of ex examination. Or, or, or assessment points, if you will. So, for example, the courses at OER Foundation have uh, contracted consultants uh, to be involved uh, to assemble are courses that are available for assessment at uh, Thomas Edison State University, for example. But that, who, but also have uh, college board exams. And I, I do know, for example, that most of our North American partners will actually recognize CLEP credit for, trans or for transfer credit. So maybe there's a, an avenue there for you as well, uh, Erwin, that through, you know, PLA, because I know that you do recognize CLEP credit, so there, there might be an avenue through, through, uh, you, know, through, you know, through that process as well. So you know, I'm just trying to think of ways of maximizing uh, this whole uh, credit transfer challenge. I yeah, that's right. And I think that, I think that's an important discussion and one that needs some focus uh, 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 in, in yes. not the distant future. Um, and what I'm talking about more right now is not so much the the exams or the assessments, but it's more about the configuration of the uh, sub constraints on the general studies diploma here. Yep. Yep. Certificate. Yes. Absolutely. And um, so hopefully the OERU is a catalyst to, uh, for those internal conversations. <laughs> That's the idea. Sounds good to me. Uh, the other bit of information I've uh, established this week, um, Mark, you must probably be aware of this already, um, but uh, Otago Polytechnic actually want to provide assessment services for all these courses as well uh, towards the Bachelor of Applied Management. And uh, we working through you know how, how this might be done and one of the things I found out this week is that individual institutions could actually set up CLEP uh, testing centers um, and uh, because there are no CLEP testing centers in New Zealand uh, for example um, and you know I've been in touch with them and they tell me you know, there's no cost in actually setting up one of these things as long as you meet the requirements to, to administer a testing center um, you know, that can be done. And the big advantage for us then is we actually don't have to develop the assessments, um, but we, you know, can, you know, provide pathways for learners to get credit. So, you know, that's, uh, Mark, I... Yeah, no, that's a, that's, a, that's a perfectly good way to go. There are about 32 exams. Um, they're all, of course, North American style, so uh, three credits, although there are a couple that are six credit uh, general subject area exams. Yeah. Uh, and the the uh, requirements for for hosting have to do with the technical uh, yeah. aspects and nothing else. So uh, yeah, it's fairly easy to do um, uh, as long as you have a process for converting those credits to uh, yep. to the local currency. You know. Yeah, and so that's what we yeah absolutely. So um, we are actually looking internally in you know getting that mapping process for the transcript credits sorted. But I, I thought I'd mention it because you know in trying to get be ready for MVP, right? Um, this is a quick way of actually getting assessment out there. Right. Uh, so that's in terms of the courses. Uh, we've made quite a bit of, oh, we're progressing with the, the, you know, the dates for these, the, these different action items. Uh, so I, I have to say, I think the MVP 
uh, initiative and the implementation plan is shaping up rather well. Jim, I'm not sure if you wanted to add anything there because uh, you put in quite a bit of work in helping to shape this plan. So uh, if I can hand the mic over to your desk. Yeah, I think uh, one of the challenges that we faced and discussed earlier in the year when we were trying to get a handle on the MVP was to come up with a, a way of uh, getting a snapshot without getting you know, too much detail that we could use with our colleagues and uh, also get everyone on the same page as it were. So um, this was the effort of this sort of implementation plan, which is uh, in a sense a high level overview, but you'll be able to drill down as we go into the detail. So it was meant to give a, you know, a, a sort of gestalt of uh, what was entailed that would have everyone thinking roughly on the same page, although the devil is in the detail as we find out as we move on. Um, the only thing that I might suggest that we could do at this meeting is maybe move the learning in a digital age from the, the, the strong MVP course candidate, something to confirm. I don't know how we do that. If we confirm in the belief that we're going to do it, or do we have to have it a bit further along the track when, before we do that? Um, my gut feeling and response uh, to that is uh, I'm, I'm an optimist. I am confident that we are going to find a, an accreditation solution. So we move it into confirmed. Uh, and by having it in the confirmed list, that might actually be a catalyst for other organizations to actually think about, um, you know, accrediting it when they see that this is happening. I'll have a conversation this week with uh, potential consultants and uh, Thomas Edison State University, as well as TRU. And uh, David, I'll ping you to, to find out if there's anybody we should be looping into the conversation at this stage uh, from USQ. So yeah, I, uh, good point, Jim. I think we should move that up into the confirmed area. I'm happy with that. Um, my final brief comment is to just scale back up to the top of the page, if you would, because when we put this together, there are some key dates, the target dates under the key points uh, that probably need to be kept in focus. So uh, we've already mentioned the meeting in Inverness uh, early October, but that really what we hope to aim for is that we can actually get some form of launch you know, during September. Uh, so we really work back from those dates. They're not exact. I mean, one of them is set in concrete, and I think we should treat the launch suggestion of September as being relatively set in concrete that we try and get there. So when we come to discuss the KPIs and target dates, I think we need to keep uh, these key dates in mind. Okay, yep. Thanks. Yep. Thanks for that, Jim. Any other comments? Or feedback from the floor vis-a-vis uh, -vis the action plan. Uh, David, um, uh, it, this was in fact your suggestion of you know, having the focus on the uh, MVP uh, KPIs. Is, uh, are we getting close to getting started here? Yeah, I think you guys are really starting to uh, get the target in sight. And uh, I agree with Jim, the harder we make the date, the more we have a target to aim for. Right, moving on then, if there are no uh, additional comments. Uh, getting back to the agenda, we are now going to uh, move to item number 10, uh, which is around uh, thinking about the uh, working group structures and our modus operandi for 2016 to consolidate and rationalize. Um, you recall from our previous meeting, we. Uh, combined the or amalgamated the quality approval, a course nomination quality approval group with the program of study working group, and we've done all the changes necessary for that. Uh, in my th working through all the KPIs, um, it seems to me around the consolidation and rationalization that we should consider amalgamating the marketing and communications group with the partner engagement group to form the marketing communications and partner engagement 
uh, working group because uh, there, there are related KPIs and there's stuff happening. So I'm, I'm putting that on the table to, to get a, a sense and feeling as a proposal we, sh we should be considering. Uh, and I thought it would be good to be discussing this as uh, agenda item number 10 because if we do move forward with that, that will impact on how we discuss the, the related KPIs. So I'm opening the floor there. The proposal is that we uh, consider amalgamating um, marketing and communications with partner engagement to form the marketing communications and partner engagement working group. So I guess we need to be asking the, uh, the folk in the partner engagement working group uh, how, they, how they feel about this. Erwin, David? Uh, yeah, I think uh, to be straight up, we haven't done enough and uh, we need to do more. And so Erwin and I have chatted about this and I guess it's getting together with, con with a group who with some common interests and some common focus and a bit of energy would move us forward. But I think one of the pieces of the marketing that you're working on, Wayne, is the uh, explainer videos. So perhaps one of the tasks that we could take on is at least vetting those scripts to make sure that they are what you need and how they, how they work is exactly what we would envision with audiences in our own uh, from our own perspective. So uh, while we don't, don't think we've accomplished very much uh, through partner engagement so far, so far, I think switching over to the video system that we recommended is something we can really get our teeth in. Yeah. Uh, that's a good suggestion, David, and, and, and well received. I mean, I think as, you know, we're moving forward with this MVP, we're getting greater clarity on the priorities and needs. Uh, over the next couple of months, so, you know, that's also helping shape the focus. So thanks for that feedback there. Erwin, uh, any specific comments from, from your side? No, I would say the same thing. I think I think sharpening that focus. <clears throat> um, I, and I think in terms of the energies that we have, the more we focus them on the MVP, um, probably the more uh, sort of pull it will give to others to maybe want to get more involved once they see a, a product. So I, I think it's almost like a refocusing of our energies to, to, to the big, you know, to, to, to get this thing out by the end of this year and, and working. Okay. Uh, any additional comments from the floor? Um, I'll take silence to mean assent. Yeah, actually, Wayne, if I could, um, just looking over the, uh, the KPIs for each of the groups, it, it strikes me that they do overlap quite a bit, but um, there is one sort of uh, division in them, which is uh, um, there's a fair amount of outreach to partners and then a fair amount of outreach to learners, which is very separate. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, it makes sense to continue to uh, uh, keep both of those going or, or to focus just on the partner engagement now with the idea that we would come back to learner engagement when we have something to offer. I just wonder what others uh, thoughts are about that. It, it's, it's a good question, Mark. I, I think, uh, or, or my thinking about this would be is those relevant KPIs from the two working groups will actually be amalgamated, right? So that they appear, so we won't be losing the importance of, you know, recruitment of learners, recruitment of partners, you know, the communication to the groups. So that they're, they're there in one place um, and then within the working groups in terms of how we're distributing the, the work to get the stuff done, um, you know, that's how we'd manage it. Because that's in part been, you know, one of the challenges, you know, we haven't had anybody to really help with, you know, kind of the, the, the marketing piece. Um, but now we've got a bit of funding to help get some of that work done. So, you know, we've got some warm blood to help move that forward. I'm not sure if that answers your question, Mark. Uh. Well, yeah, to some extent it does. I, I just wondered if it's, uh, um, the reason this occurred to me is that I know at my institution, we often get confused about the difference between marketing to, uh, to potential students on the one hand, and then to organizations on the other hand. And some of our folks in our marketing area believe that uh, well, one size sort of fits all. And, and, uh, Got, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, uh, you're absolutely right. We, we have that same confusion in our organization as well. So, <laughs> um, so, so the way that we've got it at the moment, the, the stronger sort of partner recruitment focus is, is actually part of the strategic planning group. 
Um, so, I mean, obviously the, the the linkages and you know between the two, but the kind of the responsibility for steering that forward is you know um, is well to be quite candid, the issue of recruitment of partners is of prime interest to the board of the OER Foundation because uh, if we don't have uh, membership fees, we can't run the central infrastructure. So it's kind of that relationship, yeah. Just a brief comment. Um, I think in a sense, the attraction of uh, new partners and so on is uh, everyone's responsibility. I think it's a KPI that uh, we're opportunistic and focused and keeping, keeping that on the agenda, we, we will create opportunities. And I think in the, in the brief that's gone forward to brandscaping and Mohawk Media, uh, we suggested the idea that there might be some overlap in selling the concept to a partner or to a student that could be used as a component of, uh, you know, more targeted marketing campaigns. So, so I think we should keep it, keep an eye on this and as the video products emerge, um, I think we can, you know, reassess this more later in the year perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. And in addition to that, uh, Mark, I mean, you, you've got good experience in the space uh, in terms of the organizational dynamic. I, I, mean, I would welcome any, you know, inputs and advice you can, can give us, uh, you know, you know, by commenting on that marketing brief, um, you know, it is in the wiki. So you'd be able to give us, you know, pointers or, you know, just watch out. This is a potential a challenge or, or whatever. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I, I was only concerned that we not lose sight of the yeah. two separate groups, but if these uh, two committees do merge. You know, yeah. Yeah. That's it. All right. Thank you. That's helpful. Good point. So just an in interest, I know Irwin's leaving on the, at the top of the hour, so I'm just going to rejuggle the agenda a little. And so the, the purpose of this session here is just to quickly scan the KPIs that have been, uh, the 2016 KPIs, and have a bit of a conversation about that. So what this is going to be, uh, we will look, quickly look at the partner engagement and the marketing and communication uh, KPIs. Um, around the uh, partner engagement. Uh, initially, the big focus was around, you know, the resources to develop and support partners. And uh, in true Wiki traditions, I've been totally bold here, and I've, I've put those on hold without consulting with anybody. Um, so, and this is now the open consultation, because I think the other priorities are more important. Um, this, uh, is something that we could get done relatively quickly it was the suggestion at the 2015 meeting to have an area in the partners uh, website uh, that is specifically for partners you know to getting and uh, navigating the, the particular spaces they need to navigate um, regarding the OERU development and we've actually completed the the DS for OER course so at this point, um, I just like to ask Irwin and David if if you're kind of comfortable with my rather bold approach of putting those two aspects on hold so we can focus on the other priorities? I think I can live with it. <laughs> you're much welcome to progress them as well if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, like I said earlier, I, I, I'd like to really, like even here, at, there's a lot of sort of work that's not directly um, indirectly related to this KPIs, but I have a lot of internal work to do here to, to try to line up this, uh, this, this certificate. And, and in a sense, I think that that's where my energy is best spent. Yeah. And uh, yeah, point well made, Owen, and uh, mm -hmm. that's an important priority. Yep. So that means including getting the assessment systems, getting, you know, the deans lined up and the, yeah. Behind these courses, we have a new provost who I, I haven't really fully briefed. I've been holding back a little bit, so sure. It's, there's yeah, there's work. There's definitely work there. Yeah, and hey, if there's any way that uh, we at the OER Foundation can help with any of that conversation, if you need to rope us in as you know, sort of uh, aliens from the other part of the world, uh, feel, free <laughs> to, feel free to abuse us, right? And I may very well do that. Yeah. Uh, David, uh, you yeah, have to... I'm, 
I'm better. I agree with it totally. I'm better with tasks, so that's why I recommend it. If you want me to uh, edit or comment on the scripts at all, okay. I think those two explainer videos for prospective students and prospective partners are critical pieces. They're simple. They're quick. They tell the story quickly, and uh, if we get it right, they tell the story completely. And I think getting that right is with a compelling vision is really what we need to do at this point. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually going to uh, tie in rather nicely with we look at the marketing and communications KPIs. Uh, those tasks are actually listed there. So here's the you know the whiteboard style explain the video for the partners for the learners. So those tasks are right in there, um, and also you know the from the uh, the marketing brief. Uh, the, the work we need to have a, a bit of a think of uh, uh, about a marketing plan for the first year of study. Um, these are, uh, so we've done, uh, the marketing brief has been completed, so that work is done. Uh, this idea of a, an online brochure, um, I think that's closely tied with the work that Brandscaping is going to be doing. So it's not work we actually have to do, it's really just guiding uh, Brandscaping uh, in the right direction. And um, we can have a chat about this is also part of the work that Brandscaping will be doing. Uh, so it's really just tying up that uh, KPI, uh, you know, with somebody who can just get, provide a bit of oversight. So any, uh, any comments or feedback there? And Irwin, I believe we've managed to cover the issues that you need to have covered before you leave. Thank you very much, and sorry you had to rejuggle the agenda. Uh, I will be heading off. It's really nice to see everybody here again. It's awesome, and uh, we'll keep plugging away. <laughs> Thanks, and I, love this new, uh, I love this new interface, uh, this, uh, this, this tool that we're using. It's pretty flexible. Oh, it's, it's, it's working exceptionally well, and the, the big plus for us is that there is a Linux client, so those of us that aren't allowed to use non-free software <laughs> can at least participate. Okay, well, I'll wave goodbye and we'll see you all. Bye bye. See you later, everyone. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Yep. See you, everyone. Right. Okay, so I'll take those as uh, being discussed. Uh, we can then move on to the curriculum and program of study KPIs in terms of what we're trying to achieve for the rest of the year. Quite, quite a bit of this work is actually focused on the MVP task force, so uh, that is happening. David, I might suggest that it might be a good idea uh, if you join the MVP task force, you know, just in, you know, to keep up to date around what's happening with the curriculum and program of study. So I'll send out a separate, separate invitation there because I think uh, you know, that's going to make a lot of our work easier. So the, the key objectives that we are looking at is, you know, the work of, you know, are there any additional awards within the network uh, that, that we might be able to incorporate? Um, in, in the, in the, maybe other institutions that have similar uh, qualifications, like you know, a certificate of general studies. So we just keep a tab on that. Um, also, you know, promoting more institutions to provide assessment services for the courses we already have. Uh, in addition to those uh, prior, you know, the uh, first movers, so to speak, the, uh, we'll need to, in the light of the program specification document or, or the, the developments around the program of study, now that we know what the courses are, just tweak and shape up that program specification document uh, a little, get that polished, uh, because that's going to lay the foundation for the second year, right? Because uh, once we've got a first year started, it can help prioritize the nomination for second year courses. Um, and this is ongoing work. We do actually have one or two courses in the MVP which are being designed for uh, as open boundary courses or, or dual purpose courses where they're offered to both simultaneously to both free learners as well as on campus full fee registered students. So, I think we're on track to achieving that target. So David, from your perspective, 
are the any KPIs that you know we shouldn't be looking at or should be adding on the list or do these make sense? I think um, I think they make good sense to me, uh, Wayne. Um, look pretty well uh, covered in all the things we need to do, and a very strong focus on getting the MVP up and running. So, um, from my perspective, I think uh, we can progress some of these these um, KPIs. We be you know substantially moving things in the right direction. Yeah, I, uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised at how quickly some of this is starting to come together. So, so the focused efforts and the foundations that we've sort of been laying are, are, are paying off. Right. So that looks all good then. Uh, moving on. Uh, the course approval and quality. So, oh, so what's happened now is that those objectives are actually included in the, you know, with the restructuring from the previous meeting. So they were actually listed in the curriculum and program of study. Uh, the standing committee for credit transfer. So um, Mark, again, I've totally abused my uh, privileges as an open wiki ed editor by making a number of suggestions in terms of the next steps. And I, ha I haven't consulted uh, with you or any members of the team, but I you know, wanted to put something on the table that uh, we can discuss at the meeting. Uh, so these are the ones I've uh, got listed. There's this activity that is taking place internally, which deals with the University of Highlands and Islands approval process for the CERT HE. Uh, that process is moving forward. The first draft of that has already been completed, so that gives the you know, why there's a bit of progress there. Uh, the, Irwin has already referred to this. We, we need to validate the credit transfer process uh, for the uh, Certificate of General Studies at Thompson Rivers University. So I mean, that's something that Irwin is going to, going to be working, working with, but we need to make sure that uh, it's happening right, or at least keep, you know, it's... Uh, having knowledge that it's happening. Um, the sign off of the uh, guidelines by the respective registrars, and I mean, this has been something we've never quite been sure of, you know, what, you know, what is the KPI, you know, when, when is the thing signed off? And so what I've kind of done here is, you know, brought the focus back to the MVP and said, you know, well, the partners that are offering a course within the M, you know, MVP are the folk that need to sign off for now. Um, and I think that's a good, you know, a realistic uh, objective in terms of moving forward. Um, this one here is a sign off of registrars who may be offering assessment services in addition to the uh, institutions that have nominated a course. So, for example, you, you know, you've got the um, a critical reasoning course, right? And you're providing assessment services, but you know, a target polytechnic, for example, may want to provide assessment services. And so that would then be an example of an institution that we need to sign off on the uh, uh, credit transfer guidelines. So that was the thinking there. And I think that's going to be a very small number of institutions. So there's not going to be much workload there, at least for the, uh, the 2016 year. Um, we are going to need to do a little bit of work around a handbook around the articulation agreements. So my thinking there was to actually take the, the, you know, the institutions that are directly involved with the exit credentials and have that conversation with these institutions in terms of how they actually want to manage that articulation process, whether it's by individual articulation agreement or whatever, um, and use that process to inform the development of these guidelines. And uh, the last one here is uh, I'm making a suggestion that we arrange for information sessions on these guidelines because one of the things or challenges we had with the 2015 meeting is not many folk had actually read the guidelines. So I think a little bit of work of getting that information out there might be useful. So, so those are the things I'm suggesting. Uh, Mark, uh, do that make sense? Should we tweak? Do we need to take anything off? Uh, no, I, I think the, the focus is really on the, on the first two as, as we've been discussing through this meeting. That makes a lot of sense to me. Um, 
I, I'm wondering if it wouldn't be helpful just to create some sort of a grid uh, showing all of the different uh, national systems and, and how they might interact with one another because I found in talking about um, this process, how this might work, um, the real issue is uh, most folks just don't understand, well, what would the New Zealand credits look like when they got here? What would the, yeah. uh, you, you know, uh, South African credits look like, et cetera. So I'm wondering if we don't, if it wouldn't be good just to create some sort of a table or something like yeah. that. That is the basis for, for all the rest of it. I think that's an excellent suggestion, Mark. I mean, I, I also have these, uh, or, or, you know, you know, speaking to folk in different parts of the world, they don't know what the other part of the world looks like. Uh, insofar as credits are, are concerned, and I, I think something like that would be a, a valuable addition. And you know, being a wiki, it's, it would be easy to add as a KPI on the list. Yeah. Let me see what I can what I can do there to start something like that off. See, see what already exists and build upon that. Yeah, you'll, you'll need to go to, uh, uh, you won't be able to edit directly from this page because we're actually pulling the table from another page, but I'll explain that to you in a separate email. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, so that was around the standing committee for t uh, credit transfer. And the last one here on the list is the technology group. There's actually quite a bit happening. Uh, behind the scenes uh, in terms of, you know, progressing work uh, around the MVP technology platform. And there's, a, uh, uh, so the objectives we've got listed here is the work that we need to do around the main OERU site, because obviously we host the OERU site. There's a bunch of work also related in one of the other KPIs to how we advertise the pricing and the, um, or, you know, organizations that are providing assessment services. So we'll need to do some refinements on how the courses are actually listed on the main site. Um, we've uh, completed work on the minimum viable platform, the pedagogical specifications. We're doing uh, quite a bit of work around designing a single sign on solution. And I might actually hand over to Dave in a moment to actually talk about the work that's happening there. Um, we're looking uh, yeah, this is the information that the main website needs to provide learners on, you know, the partners that are actually offering assessment services and uh, the prices for these things and how they link to the exit credentials. Uh, we don't currently have that on the OERU website, so that needs to happen before the launch. Um, yeah, we're continuing our work in getting the all things sorted for MVP and the purpose of MVP, it's not all the bells and whistles of the future systems. It's just having, you know, having something that's going to work for MVP. Um, yeah, we, um, this is ongoing work of the foundation, you know, supporting the infrastructure. Uh, this one here is, uh, again, um, you know, thinking about ways to increase engagement uh, by using you know, appropriate technologies. Um, one of the things we are planning to do and progress is actually, at least for each of the uh, partners directly engaged with MVP, that is at least uh, an IT representative from each of those organizations on the technology working group. And our ongoing work around supporting the platinum tier partners who actually fund a lot of the work that, uh, um, that's happening in this space. So those ones we had listed, Dave, uh, I just want to hand over to possibly uh, hand over to Brian and, and Dave, you know, if, if they more or less look on track. And then Dave, we might want to uh, also talk a little bit about the SSO. Sure, yeah. So yeah, there are a number of, um, number of tasks here that are contingent. Uh, sorry, my, can you all hear me by the way? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, sorry, no, the, my Zoom interface just told me something was wrong with my microphone, which then faded away, and I don't know actually what it said. Uh, apparently, that's not a problem. Um, so, yes, we've, um, we've been doing quite a bit of work. Uh, I've personally been climbing the learning curve of single sign-on technologies, and uh, it's um, a pretty steep one. But um, there are a number of those um, tasks which kind of all interrelate in, in complicated ways. And so what I'm currently keen to do is, um, 
I've, I've got a preliminary diagram there, which Wayne is showing of the single sign-on architecture. Um, and I've left a bunch of arrows off of it just to avoid complicating it unnecessarily, but essentially, um, essentially it's, a, it's a, a mechanism whereby people can have one set of credentials and uh, interact with all of the, um, all of the OERU online services. And uh, we're at the initial prototype stage at this point, so we have some elements of it working, and I'm just now trying to um, trying to get some of the other services on board so that they respond to that single sign-on mechanism. One of the reasons that I'm keen for us to have uh, representatives from some of our other partner institutions in the IT area is that we can potentially then integrate single sign-on tools that that those institutions are making available to their learners and to their staff so that uh, we can we can try to really lower the barriers to participation and collaboration within this infrastructure ecosystem. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of, I think we've got a lot of really promising um, type solutions already and it's now just a matter of actually um, uh, actually getting them being used in practice so that we can uh, iron out any of the uh, any of the technical hurdles. So we're, we're sort of using the 80-20 rule, which I suspect most of you will be familiar with. We've 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 probably got to about 60 or 70 percent. When we get to 80 percent, we'll actually have something that looks really um, compelling and um, promising, and then it will be a matter of mopping up all of the little technical details and gotchas uh, of which I'm sure there will be. But for the MVP, I think we can put on a pretty good um, demonstration of what we're able to do. So, so Dave, uh, kind of as a non-technical person, what what we're aiming to achieve here is that uh, a learner will have one logon um, that will give them access to the key services for the MVP, right? Which is our discourse that's right. the uh, yeah. the yeah. Cool sites where we're hosting on WordPress. Uh, Wiki Educator, where um, which is important for authors, um, and the, the the resource bank prototype, which was an innovation uh, that was developed by U USQ. And so the thinking is that we you know there would be one sort of login which would then authenticate users for these uh, disaggregated services that we manage, right? That's right. Yep. And and we could. Similarly integrate. So, so at the moment, this uh, the pink, the pink circle at the middle of this is the boundary of a, a number of disparate systems, which together provide the single sign-on capability. And the idea is that all of these external disparate services, like the resource bank and the discourse instances and the WordPress uh, course sites and so on, effectively will all be set up to defer to the single sign-on system. So when you click to log in on any of those systems, rather than using the system's native login, you'll be redirected to a, um, a separate OERU branded site where you'll be asked if you don't already have a login to create one. And if you already have a login, you'll just put in your credentials and it will then return you to wherever you came from logged in to that external service. But if you're logged into one of those external services, you will essentially be logged into all of them. Right. That makes sense. You, yeah. you may be required initially, the very first time you log into each of those other systems, you may be required to effectively approve the use of your credentials on that other system. But having done it once, you'll effectively be cross-logged in across all of the, the systems that you've, as a user, have given permission for uh, for the OERU services to use uh, your your credentials, the idea there is that you could, for example, update your log your your password in one place or your email address in one place, and it will then be uh, that that will then be respected by all of the services that store an email address or a password, and you won't have to log in to all of them individually. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or maintain a password or email credentials individually. We, we, we may also over time, and, and this is still to be determined, but we may be able to offer, for example, a single service dashboard where people can see all of the different things that they're involved in uh, with regard to the OERU. And they'll have a, 
a single place they can go to when they log in, for example, to the centralized single sign-on system, will give them a, a um, kind of a, a dashboard that says, um, click click on this link to go to your discourse discussion or to your your community your OERU community discussion or your OER forum discussion. Go here to click on or to go here to the various different uh, OERU courses that you're you're currently participating in or go here to go to your resource bank and so on. So that, that's the kind of kind of thing that we may be able to do over time. Yeah. And, and thanks for that, Dave. And of course, all of this will be running on uh, open source infrastructure. And uh, mm. this is why we are so happy to have <laughs> folk like yourself who can you know, help us figure this out. Um, what also complicates the OBRU in a sense is, you know, apart from the fact that we've got disaggregated disparate services that can be anywhere, um, in, you know, in theory, is our, our philosophy that no learner should ever be mandated or required to have a login password to access or access any of the course materials. So, I mean, that's also part, you know, part of a key philosophy of what we're doing. So, any account that is registered is, is optional in the sense that a learner would only register if they wanted to, you know, contribute to a discussion. So it, it, it's not a, a requirement in order to get access to the materials. Because what, again, we, I think we mentioned this in the previous meeting, which we, we saw at the regional meeting in Australia, is how important it is for certain groups of learners to be able to fail anonymously. Uh, you know, first in fact, indigenous learners, for example. So it's, it's, it's an important facet to, to, to recognize that. So, uh, thanks for that, uh, Dave. This is coming along rather nicely, I must say. Uh, let me just get rid of that. That's not what I want, where I want to be. Let me just get back to the right zoom here. I've just lost my agenda page. I'm just going to quickly go back there now. So let's just go back then to the list of uh, suggested KPIs for the technology working group. Brian, uh, at this point, uh, anything you would like to add? No, I checked in very briefly uh, last week with Dave, and he's been the one doing the lifting, so I, I asked <laughs> if I thought it would be appropriate for him to do the update, and I'm very grateful he did, and I'll just second what you said. Uh, it's great to have him aboard doing this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just put myself a lucky one. <laughs> it's great to be able to work with these technologies and do cool stuff with them that may have a big impact on a lot of people, so I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. Any other comments from the floor around uh, the technology piece? There's uh, the, many moving parts around the technology, um, but uh, it helps having a transparent record of the things that we're working on. Great, so that's, that's looking good. So uh, the, the tweaks and refinements we've implemented on the, the KPIs you know, with the strong MVP focus, uh, is, is, you know, is looking good, and that will be the basis for us to move forward. Wayne, I've just got a quick comment. We just didn't focus on strategic planning, although oh. we have mentioned it earlier. <laughs> just trying to keep me out of the meeting. It seems I'm being jinxed today. Ham. All the important points, I'm leaving you out. <laughs> um, I just uh, wanted to make a couple of suggestions. I think the KPIs, um, there's 12 of them, and they can, like the technology group, look a little bit overwhelming. But I think on reviewing them, the thing that keeps me calm about this is looking at the target date and what we've achieved in the first you know, three, four months of this year. And my suggestion or question is uh, would it be helpful now that we've got color, color coding so we've highlighted the MVP and other elements uh, to list it by target date so that it gives us a sense of urgency maybe or perspective in terms of meeting the end of year targets 
Now, that may or may not be helpful in everything, but I think where there are longer lists or working groups, it might give a sense of perspective. Um, so I just thought it was a quick question to you and the others, Wayne, whether that was possible easily to sort by target date in chronological order. And if so, is that a worthwhile representation or we just leave it for people to manipulate? Yeah, so, so um, to answer your question, yes, you can sort by target date. If you uh, click on the target date, it'll, you know, depending on, you know, uh, it, it will sort uh, chronologically. So you, you'll see here, this is, you know, going from, you know, what's already been uh, done, you know, moving, yeah. moving forward or the other, the other way around. Yeah, I mean, as an open display, that might be um, give us a useful sense of perspective in terms of priority, at least in, in terms of time. Because I think one of the target dates we've got for Dave's group and generally is to update the OERU.org site by the end of July. And clearly there's a lot to be done across a number of groups to achieve that as we get the marketing and accreditation focused together, um, it might help us gain a sense of perspective that gives a common sense of urgency, if you like. So yeah. that was one of my suggestions. Yeah, so I mean, we, we can sort according to target date, but uh, to actually go and physically list in order, uh, that's just gonna to be too much work. We haven't got the capacity okay. to do that, yeah. Okay, that was just my thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing was um, that um, I think we, those of us working on the task force and the management committee and also relating to working groups, I, I felt a sense of um, anxiety about not having had a meeting this year. So I'm a bit relieved that no one, well, not many of the others have. And um, I just yesterday sent a note out about the meeting we were having today, and I think that um, probably if we agree to focus on the MVP and related tasks and then make a judgment on when the strategic planning groups or other groups need to meet separately on that is uh, a decision that I, I've still got to make. And I see, for example, that the... Um, process evaluation that we'll be doing later in the year. Um, we've got that listed for November, but obviously the preliminary work needs to get started there. So I just uh, wouldn't mind some sort of um, generic guideline on uh, perhaps the frequency of meetings, um, just to reiterate that with the, the task force are meeting every six weeks I felt it was important for the management committee to meet um, before I necessarily call the strategic planning working group, knowing that times are a bit of a challenge for all of us. So I wouldn't mind your comment on that or anyone else. Thanks. So, so Jim, my, my thinking around this is I, I think the best way to manage it, given you know, all these interdependencies that we've got between you know, different working groups and different activities, is that the convener of each of the working groups uh, takes a decision themselves. In other words, that they, you know, they decide on the frequency of meetings that are needed for the, the, the KPIs that they're working with, you know, taking into account you know, these interdependencies. I, and I think that's the best way of, of managing it. Uh, coming back to the OERU management committee meetings, we, we'll have a discussion on the next meeting. Date, but my sense is that a meeting date around June, looking at the long list of or the, the, the master table, is actually a, a good time for the next meeting date. In other words, before the Northern Hemisphere moves on to summer vacations, um, but at sufficient time for you know some progress around these things to have taken place. Uh, it's yeah, I mean. It's this interdependency challenge, uh, and if each of our uh, conveners or uh, leaders of that, you know, that group take the decisions around when they would like to you know, convene so that they can report back by the next meeting, uh, is I think the way to go. I don't know, Jim, does that work for you? 
Yeah, I think it can. I mean, I felt more comfortable after I sent a message out to the group yesterday just saying, you know, here's the implementation plan, we're having a meeting today. If you'd like to comment or, you know, feel free to comment on the KPIs, which are listed in this different format now. So that's my other suggestion is that we might just keep the group in the loop um, yeah. and we have a specific reason to you know call a meeting on a particular issue relevant to a specific KPI for yeah. a working group. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. And and I saw your post going out to the strategic planning group because I'm also on that group. I, I, that's actually maybe a good thing for the conveners to be doing. Uh, you know, after this meeting, when we posted the minutes, it's just a you know quick reminder to the group saying, "Hey, we've met, and here's the list of KPIs. You can go and take a look at them." Uh, you know, you're just keeping folk in the loop because uh, they may not always come, you know come and look at the minutes of the management committee meeting. So I think that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't been doing that. That's a great idea. I'll start doing that. Yeah. Any other comments from? That's all I had. Thanks, Wayne. Yeah. Uh, anybody else uh, in relation to communication with the working groups? Okay. Well, it's looking good. I think we are just about uh, through the agenda. Um, again, here, yeah, I didn't want to go into uh, much detail, but I, the only thing I wanted to reference here is you'll recall the work that we did on the Gantt chart. Um, let me just try and get this off here. Um, let me just. It's actually that we threw away for OERU management committee planning. It's actually working quite well for individual course groups. So here's an example of a course schedule uh, for the four micro courses that are being developed. So that's the only point I wanted to reference there. So this is the power of the open model. Uh, things that might not work in one context, we uh, actually reuse and tweak them for other contexts where they work well. So that's the only reference I wanted to make there uh, from the agenda. The other bit of, for those of you that are familiar with uh, things like Trello, we actually do have uh, an open source version uh, of, this, of these technologies which we're using for individual planning. And this is actually quite, powerful for, you know, when we get together in meetings like this, you know, we can discuss the development of individual courses and move these cards from, you know, things we need to do to the doing to when they're done. So just a little bit of background uh, so that you're aware there are a bunch of technologies we're using to help with the individual course developments. And so the important message here is the open source message of, in, in our world, a copying is not theft. Uh, we actually encourage copying, and so we want people to copy these good ideas for their own course developments um, because we can reuse them. So in any of the institutions that are working on course developments, we have a bunch of neat technologies that we're using to move forward. Um, the last item on the agenda is to have a think about a regional planning meet. Last, last year, we had a regional planning meeting in North America as well as the Oceania region, where we focus on the open business models. Um, if we do host uh, regional meetings this year, my thinking is that it might be a good idea to focus those meetings on the actual planning of the launch of the OERU. So that's kind of my thinking at, at this point in time. So the question to the group is A, do we think uh, the, uh, you know, convening regional meetings would be a good thing? Uh, for 2016 and B, uh, if so, is, is this a good topic for uh, regional meetings? So let me open the floor there. So the silence is seeing that there's a high level of agreement for us to do this. Okay, we'll move forward. Uh, just uh, one brief comment. Uh, do you have any um, thoughts on, you know, where the, the regional meetings might be most effective? Um, I, I think the idea of focusing on the MVP launch is, you know, perfect for where we are this year. And it might be some thoughts on, you know, where it might be possible to convene. 
I think it's a combination of two things. Uh, practically, the uh, sort of the country or destination that has the most partners, so it's cheaper for people to get there, so they don't have to think about international travel, and be an, an, an institution willing to host. So those are the kinds of things I think about. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if, uh, sure if there are any other considerations we should be taking into account or ideas or thoughts. So, yeah. So the answer your question, Jim, yeah. So, I mean, uh, in, in this part of the world, uh, you know, I think it makes sense to hold it in Australia because, uh, uh, although embarrassing, I, I need to admit this, uh, the Australians are ahead of the Kiwis again. <laughs> yeah, you have more partners than we do. So it'll have to be somewhere in Australia. So I'll, I'll reach out to the Australian partners. And uh, I'll, I'll need to check on the numbers between Canada and uh, the USA. Uh, but I suspect the Canadians are a wee bit ahead here, Mark. So the way, the way to get these meetings to uh, your part of the world is to bring a few more American partners on board. <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> Anything to save a plane ticket. Yeah, fair enough. Sweet. <laughs> right, so the last item on the agenda there, um, date of the next meeting, I'm proposing that we meet in June. Um, and I can uh, set up a doodle poll for that. Uh, is, does that feel like a good time for most folk to meet? Uh, if anyone objects, um, you know, let us know. And that's the agenda. Uh, agenda. Uh, I managed to get through within three minutes, I'm um, three minutes over time, so I do apologize for that. Um, any, any other matters? Uh, no, I, I'm gonna. I guess the idea is to send out a note to our committees and then perhaps to set up a touch base meeting with them at some point before June. That makes the most sense. Yep. Okay. All right. Then uh, to everyone, I appreciate your time. Uh, the minutes for this meeting might take two or three days. I have a couple of other priorities around uh, finalization of our annual financial accounts for the auditors. Uh, so that's going to uh, keep me busy, but once I get that done, I will uh, get these minutes done. And this is uh, a volunteer who wants to do the minutes. <laughs> if you want to get them out in, uh, sooner, uh, that will be fine. But thanks, everyone. I appreciate your time, and we'll see you online. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you.